Hello, this is a PowerPoint that has been prepared and I've adapted for you with a voiceover. We want to look at how to work with sampling distributions or sample proportions based on some things you've seen today in class to give you more reinforcements. After this video, you should be able to find the mean and standard deviation of the sampling distribution of a sample proportion. You should be able to determine whether or not it is appropriate to use the normal approximation to calculate probabilities involving that same sample proportion. You should also then be able to calculate probabilities involving that sample proportion. And lastly, you should be able to evaluate a claim about a population proportion using the sampling distribution of the sample proportion. Recall some of the things that we discussed, that the sampling distribution of p-hat has some characteristics, namely the mean of the sampling distribution of p-hat is the actual population proportion, which we represent by p. The standard deviation can be found using the formula sigma sub p-hat equals the square root of p times the quantity 1 minus p, all divided by n. And this formula is only valid if the sample size is less than 10% of the population size, and we call that the 10% rule. The third thing that's important is that we are able to use normal calculations, but that can only work if we have NP, which is the number of expected successes, greater than or equal to 10, as well as N times the quantity 1 minus P, which is the expected number of failures, also greater than or equal to 10. You will now need your graphic organizer that was provided on Edmodo. If you have not printed that out, please stop and do that now so that you can have the information handy as we go through this example. Polling organization asked an SRS of 1,500 first-year college students how far away their home is. Suppose that 35% of all first-year students actually attend college within 50 miles of home. What is the probability that the random sample of 1,500 students will give a result within two percentage points of this true value? We will use the four-step process of state, plan, do, conclude. First, state. Here you want to describe what your problem is all about. What are we trying to do? We want to find the probability that the sample proportion falls between 0.33 and 0.37. In the problem, it talked about being within two percentage points. So if you subtract 2 from 0.35, also add 2 to 0.35, then we have a range of 0.33 to 0.37. Plan involves making sure the conditions are appropriate for you to actually use the normal calculations. Otherwise, your probabilities that you calculate may not be accurate. So in plan, we know that we have a simple random sample. We have a sample size of 1,500, and we know that P is 0 0.35. So we should be able to find the mean and standard deviation. From the last slide, the mean is equal to the population proportion, which is given at 0.35. The standard deviation can be calculated using the formula from the last slide to be 0 0.0123. And here in the bottom left corner is a drawing of the sampling distribution. You should draw this out whenever you are completing these types of problems. So I will give you some time to do that now if you have not done so already. Next, we need to verify some conditions. First of all, we've used this formula for standard deviation, but is it valid? Remember, we need the population size to be at least 10 times the sample size in order for this formula to be valid. So we, that means we need more than 15,000 first-year college students. Do you think it's reasonable that we could have that many first-year college students? I do. Next, we need to make sure that we can actually use the normal distribution. So we find the expected number of successes and failures. So our sample size is 1,500. 
our population proportion is 0 0.35, so that means NP is 525, and N times 1 minus P is 975. Are both of these greater than or equal to 10? Of course they are. They're both greater than 10, so it's okay to proceed with the normal calculations. In do, we will actually standardize. In other words, we'll find z-scores, and then you can use table A to find the probabilities that you need. So first we'll find a z-score for 0.33, and then a z-score for 0.37. So you can see here in the bottom left that the z-scores are negative 1.63 and 1.63 for proportions of 33% and 37% respectively. What you also see on the curve are the values related to areas to the left of each of those z-scores which represent their cumulative probabilities. Take some time and make sure that you can find those values on the table for yourself. Now in order to find the area between those, we did one of these in class. Remember that you have to take the larger area and subtract from it the smaller area and that will leave you with the shaded area that is here in the middle. So we're taking 0 0.9484, subtracting 0 0.0516 and we receive um, a difference of 0 0.8968. Lastly we conclude and the conclusion is just a statement in context regarding your findings. So to answer the question, about 90% of all simple random samples of size 1500 will give a result within two percentage points of the truth about the population. And so that is our response, about 90%. Notice that you can also use normal CDF on your calculator in order to find this probability. You should have some notes via handout on how you can do that. Go back over this PowerPoint as many times as you need to. Be prepared to practice in class with great results, and I will see you soon.